Hey, what's up? It's Madeline Paquette, and we're hosting a tasting group tonight. It's part of Wine Folly Club. I want to show you what we do to prepare for a wine tasting. Now, we'll be tasting six wines tonight, so I want to make sure I have six identical glasses. And there are essentially two options for your glassware choice a universal style glass, which will work for all types of wine, or an ISO standard tasting glass like this one. These are the professional choices in many situations. I tend to prefer the universal glasses because they're a little bit more fun and enjoyable to drink the wine. However, if you look at these glasses, you'll see they're a bit dirty. So I gotta clean them. Now, many people like to wash their glasses in a dishwasher and certainly restaurants do that as well. So it's perfectly okay to do most lead-free uh, crystal glasses can be washed in a dishwasher. However, I am a bit of a purist. I tend to like to hand wash them. I can do a better job hand washing them and there's less stress on the glass in the long term. To avoid water spots in a glass, you're gonna wanna use a polishing cloth. Now we make polishing cloths at Wine Folly and that's because we are a bit obsessed about sparkly, clean glasses. All right, these are clean and ready to go. The last thing I need for service is a spittoon. It's time to prepare the wine. It's really important to get the temperature right when doing a wine tasting. It's kind of like the difference of serving your coffee lukewarm or hot. So the right temperature matters. And most people will put their wines in the refrigerator or a cellar before a tasting. And I happen to live in the cold Northwest and it's a perfect 52 degrees out right now, which is a great temperature to chill my wines down to. So these are the two wines that I think will need some decanting before the tasting. And the reason why I choose these two to be decanted is they tend to have higher tannin and they're very high intensity wines. So lots of tannins, lots of intensity, throw it in a decanter. Or in my case, I can just pour them in the glasses here. Since I'm opening six wines tonight and there's only two people that live in this house, I am gonna use a wine preserver so that I can keep these wines open for about a month and enjoy them over a longer period of time. My current favorite wine preserver in the marketplace right now is called a Pivot Plus, and we actually did a collab with Pivot to offer these on our store in a really cool design. And the reason I like these is because they work on all different types of bottles of wines, whether it's screw caps or non-cork wines, and um, it's so easy. <laughs> all right, we're just a couple of minutes out and I have all the rest of my wines poured except for the sparkling wine. I just wanna show you how to open it safely. This is a trick I learned as a sommelier and I will never open sparkling wine any other way after learning this. So you just put your thumb on the cork of the bottle and then you open the tab and you turn it six times, six half turns. And then what you'll do is you keep your thumb on the cage the whole time because right now the wine is charged, it could explode. Uh, obviously, I don't think it's gonna explode too bad because it's been chilled but we are gonna rotate the bottom of the bottle and the cork will push against my hand and I'll resist it pushing until it... I just opened the bottle. No explosions. Yay! Okay, we're ready for tonight's tasting group. Wish me luck. If learning about wine while tasting it sounds like fun to you, definitely check out Wine Folly Club. It's a tasting group, it's a wine club, it's so much more. Uh, everyone comes together each month and we bring an excellent wines to the table and learn why wine is so interesting and captivating. And you can do it all. Head over to winefolly.com.